How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I want to introduce you to this Ultima Cosa espresso machine. Does it make a good coffee? I've dialed in the espresso over five or six tries and I'm pleasantly surprised. It makes just as good a coffee as my machine that costs three times as much. This machine is on the low end side around $350, but it's a lot cheaper than the Breville Barista Express, which usually goes around twice as much, around $700. Now I've used the Breville Barista Express over a period of two months or so, and I was never able to get a coffee as good as that comes out of this one. It takes out a lot of the redundancies in that machine and makes things simpler because sometimes you just don't need all these knobs and levers when it does one single thing. For example, in the Breville, it has two adjustments for the grind size, one on the side and one inside. So it makes the grinding a bit confusing. This Ultima Cosa has 20 grind sizes. It's very simple. You just twist the top over here, zero to 20. And I found that the granularity of the adjustment is enough for me to dial in the coffee. How good a coffee are we talking about? Well, you know, I go to a lot of coffee shops, fancy ones, ones where the owner is a barista championship and I drink coffee there. If you know what you're doing, and I'm going to show you in this video what I do exactly to get really good coffee out of it, you are going to make a coffee that easily beats Starbucks, Pete's, and the taste, at least to me, would compete very well with the boutique coffee shops. It's gonna be like 99% of the coffee that you can get outside. This naturally would save you money because you don't wanna get coffee that doesn't taste very good unless it's like a last resort. There's no other way to make it at home. You're out traveling somewhere. With that said, let me show you this machine. This is the water reservoir. It goes up to 2.8 liters. Flip it open. There's a little handle for you to hold on to the entire reservoir. In the Breville, there's actually a filter down at the bottom that you have to replace all the time. This one doesn't contain a built-in filter, but I am not too irked by that. One less thing to buy. Just make sure you put in filtered water and you just drop it into the back like that. Close it up. This is the hopper that holds all your beans. I recommend to not really fill it all up. Only put in as much beans as you need, plus a little bit more, just so that they stay fresh in an airtight container. If I twist this and remove it, some beans are left in there. I can take it out to show you the grinder. Unlock it, pull it out. Here we can see the burrs. When I touch them, they feel very sharp. And here's the outer ring of the burr grinder. If I press a bean against it, you want it to cut the bean rather than mash it. But it's actually really hard to tell the quality of the grinder just from looking at it. We can take a look at the coffee grinds after it's done. Adding some beans to it. The controls are very simple. There's a power button, single shot, double shot grind, single shot, double shot brew, and the espresso pressure gauge. The grind comes out of this port. The port of filter goes in this hole over here. Steam wand is right here. And the right side, you have a knob that gives hot water or steam. The steam wand pivots and you can point it towards this hole to eject excess water. There's two holes over here. It corresponds to the downspouts of this porta filter. Any kind of extras would drip in those holes. The drip tray, it comes off like that. There's a little cover thing right here. This is for the internal water to eject into that hole. And there's a little floater thing. It comes up and shows you that it's filled up. In the Barista Express, it's actually a lot more complicated complicated. They have a lot more pieces to do the exact same thing. So reducing part count actually reduces the cost of this machine. They've managed to reduce complexity without reducing the quality of the coffee that comes out of it. Actually, in my opinion, it actually improved the quality. Inside the drip tray, there's also a little accessory storage right here. This contains a single and double shot double wall coffee filters for pre-ground coffee. Notice there's a lot of holes in the first wall, but on the second wall, there's only one single hole. This is to put maximum pressure and allow the pre-ground coffee because you can't control the coffee grind size very well. And it allows a very slow release, which allows you to still brew a reasonable cup of coffee even though you're not grinding your own coffee. Personally, I feel there's still a difference in taste. It's not as good, of course. The coffee beans are not as fresh, so I tend to not use these. There's a little cleaning brush. This is for cleaning the bottom of the porta filter area right here. And there's a little wedge thing. You can twist it and it'll come off in case you need a tool. But most of the time I just use whatever spoon that I'm using and just kind of twist it open with that, like that. 
and you also have this little needle thing it allows you to clean up your steam wand with the big pin you can poke it in there and clean it up with the small pin you can go and clean up one of the holes in these porta filters one gripe i have with the filters is the single and double shot is not all that different the single you can put 13 to 15 grams of coffee the double you can put 16 to 18 grams so it's not quite double the single to me is already a double shot because i normally use 16 grams for double shot so if you want to do a single shot there's no way to do it the filters doesn't go that small one positive is that this single shot allows you to get the puck out really easily if you use any other machine you would know that single pucks are super hard to get out it doesn't just pop out you have to end up sticking something in there to brush out all the coffee grind so it's not very easy to clean but this one since it's close to two shots it just pops right out at the default setting let's push the single shot and we can see how many grams come out of this thing put it on here so we got around 13 grams 12.5 without doing anything special you might be inclined to use the tamper just straight on that I like to just kind of even it out a little bit or you might get all crazy with the espresso setup. You can put this ring on here before doing all that. Kind of knock it around and I have a WDT tool. This allows you to disperse it a bit better. This is not absolutely necessary. I'll tell you which tools is absolutely necessary, which is a temperature gauge for your milk frothing. Even this tamper or this ring is not absolutely necessary. I'll just use the one that comes with this machine. You just kind of put it on there, make sure it's flat. You just kind of push all that back in. After you push it about 30 pounds, you twist it a little bit. And then you lift it. Looks pretty even to me. If you decide to get one of these machines and start being your own barista, the most important thing is to get fresh coffee beans with a roast date. Most beans that you buy at the supermarket does not have roast dates. They just have a best buy date, which means it might have been roasted like a year ago. So if you are able to find something that says a roast date and you drink it within one month of the roasting, just from that, you're going to make superior coffee the second thing i absolutely would get their frothing cup is absolutely fine you should get one of these temperature gauge it's like ten dollars or so if you like to make lattes this is absolutely important to not go over temperature and burn your milk i use almond milk and so the temperature is very very sensitive to going over into the green zone it has to not touch the green zone at all on this temperature gauge the importance of having hot milk you don't want a lukewarm latte so when it's hot it tastes better the scale sure it's nice to be able to calibrate things and figure out how many grams is coming out but with the standard setting on this it spews out 13 grams roughly and i think that is absolutely okay so you don't absolutely need a scale it's probably something that you can get later on this little setup here i have other tools as well and i end up using the wdd tool the most with this little funnel thing and i like this tamper it's not a calibrated tamper where you push as hard as you want and it clicks and it stops pushing at certain pressure is actually a spring loaded one so you gotta push it to a certain amount and you know how much pressure you're giving it doesn't actually prevent you from pushing too hard all this is not necessary to give you a very very good cup all i absolutely needed was the temperature probe over here for the milk one drawback and it's not a big deal because you can just use a timer on your phone is that when you do the brewing it actually does a measurement by the amount of water volume that comes out so no matter how fine or how coarse it's going to try to squeeze a certain amount out but the proper way to brew espresso is to only brew it for around 25 seconds no matter if you have less coffee coming out or more coffee coming out if you have too little coming out that means you need to make your coffee beans coarser the next time if you have too much coming out you have to make it finer so the amount of time to brew it is non-negotiable in order to make a good cup too long it's going to taste bitter and too short it's just not going to brew enough so over here i'm going to measure one dose it does a pre-infusion and now it's going to measure the amount of water coming out for one shot and we see that 
58.9 grams divided by 13 grams of coffee, which is a ratio of 4.5. You really want to shoot for a ratio of as little as maybe 1.5. Optimally, I'd say two, but you can go as high as maybe three and a half or four and it'll still taste okay. But four and a half is definitely a little bit too much. So what I personally do is right when I push this button, I start the timer and I stop it manually myself after 25 seconds. Let's see how many grams the double shot does. Pre-infusion. 98 grams and if the double shot grinder does 16 grams it's gonna be a ratio of one to six so i think they have a little bit of tweaking to do on this one you can actually change the amount of water that comes out this setting is actually not exactly what you want what you want is the amount of time not the amount of water. So I just recommend to stop it at 25 seconds instead the machine is warmed up i have not turned on the steam wand yet i'm gonna start it Turn on the steam. It's gonna do its thing and try to get steam out. 20 seconds later, it starts steaming. So, okay, that's ready. So we can turn that off. I have some homemade almond milk. There's nothing but almonds and water in this thing. Put four ounces of that in there and put the temperature probe, push it all the way down, lift it up just a smidgen so it's not touching the bottom. This steam wand is actually pretty powerful, much more powerful than the Breville Barista Express. It's actually a little bit too powerful because it really hurts my ears and I need to put on this hearing protection in order to use it. I just put it just right underneath the surface and looking at the temperature at the same time, I actually need to stop right there at 130 degrees. So it's coming up right, right there. Oops, I was supposed to turn that off. Forgot to turn it off because I was doing it in front of the camera. It overshoots a little bit, so I don't want it to go over the green. This is good enough for um, the almond milk. And I like to eject some hot water here. That allows me to clean the wand a little bit. I got the coffee that's tamped. And we want to just kind of warm up this area over here. So let's just push it to get a little bit of water coming out. Put the porta filter in. Lock it in place. I'm going to start the timer and do a single shot. It's coming out. That took me a one second to go from here to here. So I'm going to stop it at around 27, let's say. Okay. And we can see how many grams came out 33 divided by 13 it's around two and a half so pretty much right on the spot usually pretty happy if i can get anywhere between one and a half to two and a half i like sugar in my coffee so i'll put in one teaspoon in the hot coffee mix that up you want to get rid of the top biggest foam pour in about half of it and then you can do your latte art I still have not mastered this too well. Let's give this drink a try. A strong coffee flavor without it being overly bitter. It's going to be a little bit bitter because it's coffee. Kind of like a chocolatey, nutty flavor. Oh yeah. This bean that I'm using is actually from Italy. It's called Cafe Fernagno Arabica 100%. It has a production date on it and an expiration date of two years later. I try to get as fresh a bag as I could. So this is in April of this year. Surprisingly though, when I use my more expensive machine, I've never gotten it to taste this good. This is the best incarnation I've tasted with these particular beans in, in any machine actually. I forgot to show you guys a pressure gauge here. So let me put a cup back down here. Let me brew some more. Espresso range. <clears throat> Personally, I prefer to go all the way up here. And it was like that when I first brewed it. For some reason, after it sits for a while, it's not reaching as high a pressure. So when you're done, remove the porta filter. 
and you got your puck right there. What's this craziness here? I got a random flyer. I like getting junk mail now because I get these pieces of paper to put my coffee pucks. You see what I mean when it's a single shot, it comes out pretty easily. Just like that. And paper is compostable. So I fold it like this, fold it once over like a little pocket, fold it over here and fold it back into itself. And now this is kind of self-contained. There's no coffee grinds everywhere. So this is easy to discard. There's some cleanup with the machine that's necessary. I'm put a cup right here. I'm gonna push a little bit of water in here just by pushing the single brew. See a little bit of coffee coming out, run it until it's clear. It doesn't have to run all the way, like halfway. We can stop it now and it's nice and clean. And the drip tray, you can take it out. Normally I just pour this into the sink, but I'm pouring it into a cup this time. And once in a while you wanna wash this drip tray as well. We just wanna keep things kind of tidy, wipe the tray down, and it's ready for the next use. You got the dirty porta filter. You gotta open this up every time in order to clean the inside. You see, there's a little bit of coffee residue in here. Just kind of rinse it. Thanks for watching this video. If you guys are interested in getting one of these, I highly, highly recommend it. And I don't say this very lightly to all the products that I recommend. It's a very good beginner machine. If you want to do all the fussy stuff like a barista, this is the perfect way to do it. Check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.